Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to remove a dash out of a 95 to 98, more specifically 97 to 98 Chevy Silverado. First thing I'm going to do is I'm pull the glove box out right here on the side. There's a little tab. You want to push that up, and this should slide. This little tab right here you'll see in there it will slide back and then you can unhook this little strap right here and the glove box will just come out easily so it looks like mine just came off this is supposed to be clipped into the frame of the dash but yeah as you can see that's what that clip looks like next you do you pull or push on each side of this glove box comes off and it just hooks in underneath. I'm going to be pulling off this bezel that surrounds your stereo, your cluster, all of this. I'm going to pull that off and uh, we'll go from there. This piece all I do is grab with my fingers and just pull back just trying to wiggle it loose. It can be brittle but uh, you don't really need any specialty tools to get this thing off. Take your column shifter and pull it all the way down. And then once you get this thing loosened off, unplug all your lights. This one's got the uh, the switches for 4x4 and everything else that goes along with that. So for the lights here, this plug, be careful pushing these in. See, there's a little bit of an edge on the tab there. You want to push that in and pull it out. These can be brittle, so just be extra careful unplugging all of this. As you can see, I got it out. All it is is just use this flat blade. I pushed down there, pushed it down, and then poked it out, but I was in the hole pushing it down and feeding it out like that. And for the cargo light switch, again, push that tab down and push it through this groove. This uh, airbag stuff, there's this blue little piece right here. Pull that out. And then you can push this tab in right there. So focus, push that tab in and just pull it out. Lastly, just like the light switch that is on the left side of your dash, this uh, 4x4 switch is the exact same way. Just push it down and pull it out. Get everything unplugged and loose, it just pulls off just like that. Nice and easy. Here's what the tabs all look like on the back. Nothing crazy, just some metal clips that look like that. Just be careful not to break them. While we are here, we will want to pull out the radio because the antenna cable is all tied into the back here and you want to feed that out. So the radio comes out and the cluster, cluster has four seven millimeter bolts on each side and it just pulls straight out. Here's the cluster. There's actually nothing to unplug in this little bit. Just kind of slides in over top of that. Not sure if I like it. Because I feel like having an actual plug makes me feel more safe and secure knowing that it's actually plugged in. But I guess once you have it in, you test it before you button it all up. The radio, there's a little tab right there on both sides. And you pull, push that down, and you want to push those down and then pull the whole unit out. Just some standard plugs essentially. Push the tab down, pull it out. Again, push that tab down, pull it out. And then the antenna is just a standard looking, just pull it straight out, nothing to, to worry about on that. Now there are three screws up here, those are gonna be the last ones that I take out because once I have everything loose and unplugged, those three are gonna hold the whole dash in. And once you undo them, the whole thing's gonna tip forward and I wanna avoid doing that. So those are the three that I do at the very end. Next, you're gonna to look to remove this. There will be one, two, three, four. Yeah, four seven millimeter bolts holding this lower pad, dash pad piece in. 
kind of holds the uh, the nut cooler or nut heater in winter it holds that in place too and once we get this off we will work on removing the uh, lighter stuff out once you get those screws loose we got to disconnect the uh, park brake cable release switch so you want to pull this back it's a lot easier two hands for lots of this stuff obviously but pull this back till that gets loose then you feed it out of the groove that's in here and once that's loose you got you can unhook it from there and it should just pull straight out again just gently pull these plastic pieces off they can be a little brittle it just clips like that holding it on here's the whole cable assembly for that release so that all comes out as one and then the vent right here is clipped on with the same way so just be aware of uh, where all the clips are I see one of them it fell in behind the dash so I'll have to get that when I pull the whole thing out next I'm gonna take off this just so I can get to the wiring that's gonna be in the back here for my cigarette lighter and even these 12 volt power sources now there's gonna be four of these tabs right here and you want to get a screwdriver in there and pop them out they just come out like that I'm using this cheap trim panel tool I'm not at work so I don't have my good tools but a small flat blade screwdriver I just have this bit from some cheap multi socket whatever set of stuff from Napa I mean anything they can get in there to pry back there and pop those out because like I said there's gonna be four of them that's all it's gonna take to uh, get this out next we're gonna work on this there's these clips they pop out right there they look like that when they're snapped in but get in behind there with a flat blade or a fork and pop them out so they look like that there's two on the right side and two on the left side got it all popped out when I popped out that metal clip from before just fell out just unplug all of these there's a light right here and then this is removed clips these two pieces you want to push them out and that'll unclip it from in behind here and for this guy from the top side here where you're sitting you just got to get a screwdriver a flat blade in and push this to release this edge and then it should just come out easy once you get the one side out I'm gonna remove my kick panels next as it sits like here you're pretty much just prying it out and this little piece sits underneath the that bit of the, the sill I see that my clips stayed put here so I'll have to pull the clips out at the same time now and uh, just slide them back over the plastic bit same idea on the driver's side I don't know why but every time I take one of these apart hood release latch is always broken I'll have to glue that up later take the vent out just slides into a tube not a big deal then I'm gonna take this lower plate out underneath the steering column there's gonna be four 10 millimeter bolts holding that on once that is out of the way there's this little plate right here where the vent goes and there's two sevens holding that in metal plates out of the way behind that cluster there's a seven right here a seven right there there's a seven over there by the glove box I think there's one over there I'll have to double check there's one right here on each side of the the lighters and then there's a hidden one back here your steering column there's a bar right here which we will have to remove there's a hidden one further down in there that has to come out and yes there's a hidden one right there now in behind the glove box that's holding up the airbag there's going to be a bolt right there 13 and a 13 right there and I believe a another 13 not a 15 a 13 so two 13 bolts and a 13 nut 
holding this side of the dash on still. There's also a 13 right behind the kick panel, same as on the driver's side. And there's a bit of the dash that goes around this pin. I'll show you how to do that later. So underneath the steering column, there's gonna be two 15s right here and two, one there and one there that need to come out. We're gonna take this bar out that goes across there. And what we're also gonna to need to do is uh, there's that guy right there and that guy right there. Those are also 15s, those gotta come out. And also, there's a bracket right here and a bracket right here. They can get in the way when you're pulling the dash. But whatever you can do to get the, those tens there and the tens on this side out, do that as well. Whether you have to move the steering column up or down, leave these 15s in or take them out and, and uh, try your best to make it as easy as you can on yourself. So, got that bar out that goes underneath there. That's just so that we can slip and slide it up and over the steering column when we're ready to pull the thing out. Well, I got my steering column loose. Gives you a little bit more room when you're lifting the dash up and over. I believe I have everything out. These uh, brackets definitely use a ratcheting wrench. Just take those out. They're a little tough, they're a little tight spaced. And then the next big thing is dealing with all the electrical. And luckily somebody put an aftermarket command start which, as you can see, they did such a horrible job installing it. I'm gonna have to sort that issue out. I'm hoping that they tied it into this harness that goes into the steering column. Because maybe I can just unplug it right there and feed it back. Otherwise, I might have to be starting to cut this Mickey Mouse wiring out of the way. Now to take some wiring out from underneath the dash, there's a few things you gotta go underneath the hood for. You want to unbolt the computer and the fuse relay. The fuse relay center. There's uh, some bolts underneath here. Like right there. There's one right there. Right there. I believe there's three. Could be wrong. One. Two maybe? Maybe just two. And then this guy. Right there, behind there, and again behind there. And there's a fourth one down there somewhere. So whatever bolts you gotta take off to remove that or to loosen it out of the way, just take those ones out. And there should just be four for this. Okay, there's three. One, two, three, 10 millimeter head bolts to loosen off your fuses there. And then there's just the four, again, for the computer itself. Now that the easy part is done, getting this all out of the way, giving yourself some more room, right back here. There's a white one at the top and a black one at the bottom. That all has to get removed. If I can get a better angle at it, I'll tell you more. So. It's kind of awkward and hard to see, but there's a TE30 that needs to be loosened up. That'll actually remove the, this connector from the firewall. And there's a seven millimeter. You see that one right there? One up there. And there's one, another one tucked in back here somewhere. And that'll actually remove the two sides of this big connector to, together. It'll actually separate the two. And then this white one, up here, you see all of these connectors, there's seven or eight of them. Yeah, unfortunately, you gotta trace them all back like this, right back to here, and un unplug them individually, and then you gotta feed them through, and that's how you get all the wiring from the engine bay through the firewall. Okay, so here's all the plugs that come out of the white top portion of the harness. They're kind of just plugging everywhere. There was one here, there's a, a few down there, right there, one plugs in right there. And now this main big one, this black one here, a T30, there's a hole. 
And then there's a hole right here. Then there's a, a seven mil right there and a seven mil back down there that you gotta take out. And that'll separate the whole harness from the firewall. So about the T30 loosened, it's not gonna come out, it'll stay in there and this just, that'll unplug that main harness. And then the two sevens are gonna remove the rest of it on the inside. And this is what was screwed in, one of these things. So pull these tabs back and be one where the other seven mil bolt was up higher. Pull these tabs out and then pull all the wiring out with it. That should all loosen off nicely. Now lucky for me, I got this whole rat's nest of command start. I got to sort out and fish out all these wires and see what kind of damage the previous guy did to the uh, main wiring harness for the dash. So if you have one of these, just take your time and trace the wires back, see if you can cut it or if you can unhook it or whatever it might be. So I went ahead and separated what looks like to be the steering column harness. And here again, it's just a seven millimeter bolt that holds those two together to loosen off, pull it apart. There's a plug right here that I'll have to get unplugged that's tied into the steering column harness. And then there's some more wires that I gotta trace back. That looks like right here and right here. These two green pins, pull them out, unplug them, and that should be unplugging your whole steering column from the, the dash. I lied, there's a airbag connecting, connection to undo as well. Once you got everything unbolted, as much wiring undone as you can, the whole dash will just tip forward. You just kind of have it sit and lean on the steering wheel. Just be careful because it can be a little bit brittle. And then it's just a matter of unplugging things on that passenger side for the airbag. And there's still a few other plugins to go behind there, I believe. On the passenger side, there's a plug-in right there. A white one that goes right there. It's actually supposed to be snapped up there. And then there's this guy right here. And this is this gets clipped down in there. Unplug this from this uh, box right here. There's this blue wire, there's a little tab. Oh, where is it? Back here, like a little pin. And then you gotta slide that off. But I got some sort of ground right there. And what I think is the last of the wiring is back in here, in the center up top. There's a whole bundle of airbag stuff. Three plugs, and I believe that's all the wiring to take the dash out. So that is what all the wiring is. This is for the steering column. This is all that stuff up in the dash. This goes in the engine bay. This is on the firewall. Here's the plugs that are in behind where the airbag sits. Here's lighter shit. You gotta remember that the antenna goes from that fender and it comes all the way up through here somewhere. Up there, I think. I didn't show that, but it's kind of where it goes, it just feeds through there. But yeah, that is what the back side of a dash looks like. Give you guys an overview if you want to take a look at it. It's a lot of wiring, but it really isn't a lot once you kind of break it down. It's pretty straightforward to get out. So here's the steering column stuff. This is what came out of that block that goes in the firewall which plugs into that. There's your wiring up there. Your antenna, the other plugs. You can kind of see how it all goes in when it's all out. It's pretty basic. This is still sitting here loose. It might be easier if you take out the uh, column, but uh, you can always do it without taking that out, that's for sure. There are a couple of downsides. Is this plug? from a 97 to a 98 is different. I don't know why. And then uh, the headlight harness is a different plug as well. I'll just show you here. This is the headlight harness out of a 97. As you can see, it's like a round plug. All the wires from a 97 to a 98 
are the exact same color, except, oh, where is it? They did something a little different. They put, oh God. Bear with me now. I'm able to just pop the hood and see. Here's the headlight harness out of a 97 round bit. Same color as the 98, but they have these two green ones right here. They both have the airbag stuff there too. This is a 98 parts truck. As you can see, that plug is different. Here's what the plug looks like on a 98. Same colors, but different plug on this.